Okay, we're back. What's our next viewer's question? Well, let me check the teleprompter. Uh, we're asked, could you gain energy by compressing space-time to blue shift photons? It seems like that would lead to thermodynamics shenanigans. Ooh, test. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. I know, I know. Okay, so, so I think this came from our discussion about energy in the universe mm -hmm. anyway, and we have this, this issue that um, in general relativity, the, the notion of conservation of energy is not the same as what we get from classical physics. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the, the well-known example that we spoke about is the, the redshifting of photons as they travel through the universe. And this, this is a more complex question than we can really go into here, but photons get longer, their wavelength gets longer, which means their energy goes down. And we have this question of where did the energy go? Mm -hmm. So this is like the mm -hmm. flip of that sort of question, saying that if you have some photons and you put them in space time and squeeze that space time, yep. do you get energy out of that? Well, well, it depends how you ask the question. So you've got to be a bit careful here. So yes, if our universe tomorrow decided that it wanted to start to re-collapse, right, then yes, the energy of photons would start to go up. And so there would be sort of, just as, as today there's less energy in all the photons than there was yesterday because of redshift, if we recollapsed, then tomorrow there would be more energy in the photons because of blue shift, because they would all be sort of, uh, you think of all, or instead of being stretched by expansion, they're being compressed by this this collapse. But I mean, the question then is, is uh, is there thermodynamic shenanigans that, that could go on here? So the worry here is if you're a physicist, um, there can't be a way to make a perpetual motion machine. That's the, 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 the <laughs> the number one sort of story here. So is there some sort of way of making a perpetual motion machine if we start compressing space time? So I think the thing to say there is we don't, you, we're always inside the space time. It's not a sort of machine over there, unless you've got some really weird theories about, you know, pocket universes or something, but we'll leave those for science fiction. Uh, we're inside the space time, so we can't really control how it expands and contracts. So it'll just start to contract, the photons will start to get more energy and there'll just be more energy available there. In, in, a, in the most sort of general terms, it won't create, um, in order to have a heat engine, you need uh, energy difference, a temperature difference. So you fire up your coal in your coal burning factory so that there's a hot bit over there but you also need a cold bit over here you can't have your entire factory at that same temperature i just put a you mean power station not factory oh you <laughs> depends how you're running things i suppose <laughs> okay. yeah, fair enough. sure power station yeah it's probably a better illustration um so you need a temperature difference so in the limit where the universe is totally uniform you don't get a temperature difference from here to there so in that sense there's no way to sort of um do any thermodynamic shenanigans with a universe that contracts however there are some shenanigans that can be done. So in an expanding universe, there's a, there's a paper from the fairly well-known cosmologist, Edward Harrison. I think it's from 1995. Um, and it's called, I think it's called something like Harvesting Energy in an Expanding Universe. And so he puts forward the following, um, it's really a thought experiment. But, you know, there are, there's a galaxy over there, if we look far enough, which is which is out the window, <laughs> if, if we look far enough, which is moving away from us. So imagine we had a really long rope, mm -hmm. okay? And we sort of lasso this, this galaxy, we tie it to something here, and then we just let it pull on a generator here on Earth. And as the generator sort of it gets pulled, the galaxy slows down, of course, it's we're pulling back, but there's a whole heap of kinetic energy there in a sort of simple Newtonian sense that's that's now being put into our generator here on earth and hey presto we've made a whole boatload of of energy we slowed down a, te a galaxy this tethered galaxy slightly but that seems to be a way of getting some energy out of the expansion where does that energy come from luke where does the energy <laughs> come from well this is the point we're trying to avoid it's it's very hard to ask where the energy comes from in cosmology yeah it seems like in this case if you just had an ordinary newtonian view of the expansion of the universe which which you can have on some some level it would come from the fact that uh the universe afterwards after you've done this it would be more uh inhomogeneous 
And so there's more of an over-density in this bit. Yeah. And so in, in classical Newtonian terms, you'd say that you got the energy out of the, um, the potential energy that was there because the universe was more uniform. Yeah. It's, it's kind of difficult to, to do that. You can't really do that calculation in general relativity. Um, and it's especially hard to think how you would do it if the universe was completely uniform and then you start doing things. But, I mean... There is uh, energy. We should, we should add for the 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 use uh, the users the 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 viewers <laughs> that the reason that we can't do this in general relativity is because of the 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 nonlinear aspects of the equations. Right, yeah. you can't add together the effects of individual masses the same way you can in Newtonian yeah. gravity. So we can't actually ask the question of how the universe responds, how all the other galaxies in the universe respond when you tag mm. out a galaxy using this tether that you have. Yeah. We just don't have the mathematical capability to do it. Yeah. I, I should also say, um, this is a highly idealized experiment. So there's a there's a point at which Harrison says, um, uh, you know, it would take time. You know, the tethers, <laughs> how do you get a rope that strong? How do you actually attach a rope to a galaxy? That's a tough question. Um, it would take time, of course, for for the, the tension on the rope to sort of slacken out. There's a whole heap of ridiculous issues like that that yeah. make this thing a, you know, uh, uh, very difficult to actually do in practice. Uh, in principle, in the paper... So I, I Did you pass this paper on to me? Or I did. I, I said it for you to do for your... My honours project, yeah. project. This is 2005. So there's a the classic... So every you should know this as a student, all right? Your, your supervisor hands you a paper. The paper says... Uh, the relevant equation is, and then there's equation one, and then it took me like three months to try and derive equation one, but I eventually did, much to my uh, my <laughs> personal delight. Um, it, it, it's a hard question, actually. Oh, well, let me go into this slightly, because you're thinking about a force, which is a old-timey Newtonian concept, but in the context of general relativity, where you've got... We usually don't think about forces, because gravity's not a force. Um, and so it's actually a bit hard to... to to pull apart that equation, but if anyone wants to see it, I'm happy to perform that one live at any at any point. the 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 point here is um, the overall expansion of space is not something we can control, and so there's not really any thermodynamic shenanigans on offer because you we can't sort of change that to then sort of try and build use a bit of that to build a a perpetual motion machine. But there are some there are some weird things about this expanding space where, I mean, you could, in principle, tie a rope around a galaxy and get some energy out, and that energy would have to come from somewhere. Um, well, if you were doing it Newtonian, it'd have to come from somewhere. Um, but within uh, within Einstein, that's a much harder question to, to ask and answer. Okay. I'm going to go back to the original question and just say there's, there's another way of thinking about this. Instead of thinking about the entire space-time uh, expansion of the universe, you can think about a small patch of the universe mm -hmm. and controlling that patch and changing the structure of that space-time. Uh, and then how, if you've got photons in there, you can squeeze it and you, maybe the photons become bluer and so you get more energy. But to do that, you've got to manipulate space-time, yeah. right? And to manipulate space-time, you've got to put energy into a particular kind of yeah, configuration, yeah. etc. And I've not done the calculations, but I've got a funny feeling that the amount of energy that you need to put in to manipulate the space time to make the photons hotter, you're not going to win in some sort of thermodynamic kind of way there. Oh, yeah, that'd be interesting. We should totally look into that. <laughs> we will. But that's for another day. That's for another day.